Hi, I'm Patu Guru Free Fin Cal. In today's video, let's do a quick walkthrough of how to enter capital gains from mutual funds and shares in the ITR2 form or the ITR3 form. So if you are a salaried person and you have capital gains, you have to file ITR2. If you are a business person or a professional, then you will have to file uh, ITR3 if you have capital gains. So this is the uh, schedule sheet of ITR2. I have now logged into my uh, mother's account and because I have uh, entered uh, uh, data in my account and my wife's account, I can't use that. So, so here, if you scroll down, you will be able to see the scheduled capital gains CG. Let's click on that. And then you have, let me just go to full screen so it's easier. So in the scheduled capital gains, you have this checklist. If you have um, short term capital gains from equity or, or mutual funds, you will have to choose this one that is the uh, equity share or uh, unit of equity oriented mutual funds or unit of a business trust on which ST, STT is paid under section 111A. If you have long term capital gains from equity mutual funds or share, you will have to choose this in which STT is paid under section 112A. Then if you have uh, capital gains from um, non equity funds, you will have to choose from sale of assets from uh, other than all the above listed items. So non equity mutual funds means all debt mutual funds, all gold mutual funds, all international mutual funds, all fund of funds they will come under non equity mutual funds. So once you do that, you can hit continue, then wait for it to load a bit. So now you can see here, it will clearly tell you. So this, this is the first one is for STCG short term capital gain. The second term is for long term capital gains, both of them for equity. And then this is for um, non equity. So let's go to short term capital gains here. And you'll have to click on add details. And then you'll have to choose 111A, the other one is not for uh, resident retail investors. So full value of consideration means the actual amount you redeemed. So let's say this is uh, 1001. That's what I usually put for showing an example. And that's why it's already pre-filled there. And then um, cost of acquisition without indexation. So indexation means you are increasing the purchase price using cost inflation index for short term capital gains indexation will not apply so we have to choose this cost of acquisition without indexation so let's say it is some 100 rupees and uh, cost of improvement is not relevant here forget about that expenditure wholly and exclusively exclusively in connection with the transfer if you have any brokerage or commissions that was paid you can just enter that here uh, let's put it as 1 rupee so you have 101 and then you can see that from 1001 this 101 is deducted and you have the capital gain as 900 that's it that's that's as simple as that uh, if you have several uh, entries of short term capital gains for example if you are a, um, a trader or if you have sold many many uh, mutual funds in, in a short term in, uh, uh, in the last financial year then you can add all the uh, the uh, redemption amounts together and enter it in the full value of consideration you can enter the all the uh, purchase prices and enter it here so you can do a consolidated entry uh, but i would recommend that for the first time assuming you just have only a few entries you you enter each uh, mutual fund sales that is for short term capital gain or each equity trade again for short term capital gain individually here just as a matter of practice after that you can do consolidation and so on so that's it it's entered there if you go back here you, you can see that you can always edit it or you can uh, uh, add more uh, as as you prefer so that's that's that so that's uh, the simple uh, way to enter short term capital gains now coming to um, non equity funds short term capital gains long term capital gains here, if you click on this, edit it, you will have to choose whether you have short term. Um, if you have long term, you can click on that as well. So here again, short term capital gains. In this case, you will have to enter um, 
here this the full value of consideration in respect of assets other than unquoted shares again i just put that 1001 here and then cost of acquisition without indexation short term capital gain there is no indexation so you just add that again here and uh, expenditure in connection with transfer put that as one and then again you get the short term capital gain like that in terms of long term capital gain for long term capital gains from non equity funds you have uh, to factor in indexation that is you have a purchase price then you have to uh, factor in using the cost inflation index what would be the purchase price if it was made in the financial year of sale so you have to hike the purchase price using the cost inflation index this um, cost of acquisition with indexation data is usually available in the capital gains uh, account statement you can get it from there again you will in the long term capital gains you will have to enter here full value of consider, uh, consideration in respect of assets other than unquoted shares put that amount then cost of acquisition with indexation so let's say that is 125 rupees expenditure in connection with transfer 1 rupee and that's about it then it will automatically find the balance and that's it so now if you uh, save it it will immediately tell you the um, so you have 900 rupees short term capital gains then you have uh, from this is from equity or shares from non equity funds you have stg uh, stcg as 900 ltcg as 875 and so on so that's it so if you have multiple entries again you can consolidate you can add all the full values of uh, all the values of consideration um, full value of consideration add them all up and then the cost of acquisition add them all up and have a single entry that's fine but if you have two or three entries i would recommend that you have you do it again and again just to get used to it uh, first time it will be daunting but then i mean uh, with practice everything becomes quite simple now many people comment uh, i i use uh, this third party service that's easier and so on that's fine you if you want to use third party service go use third party services i am not interested in any uh, uh, sharing my data uh, with any intermediaries i'm very happy doing it all by myself now coming to long term capital gains here is where the um, meat of the problem is here this is long term capital gains from equity and um equity shares and equity mutual funds so if you go here uh you have to click on view schedule 112a now there is a template provided csv template provided for you to enter all the data and uh, you can upload it but for first time users i do not recommend using the template because you will get into validation errors it's better to use the add details and enter it if you have two or three it will just take a few minutes to enter each detail there's no need for a csv of course what you can do is copy the final result and keep it in an excel file just for safe keeping so now here you have to uh, be a little careful first thing you have to uh, decide is what is the um, um, purchase date was the units purchased on or before 31st january 2018 or where they purchased after 2 january uh, 31st january 2018 this is because there is a rule called grandfathering rule that will apply to units purchased on or before 31st january 2018 this is because the long term tax uh, capital gains from equity was uh, taxable only from 1st february 2018 onwards that is that rule came into play uh, after uh, the financial year starting april 1st 2018 um, so that's why you have these two uh, Uh, you know separate uh, ways to file so if if it is a recent purchase so if it was purchased after 31st january 2018 things are very simple uh, you can you don't need to worry about anything you just need to up, uh, enter the uh, redemption amount uh, you have to enter the uh, expenditure brokerage or commission charge then you have to enter the um, sorry you, you sorry cost of acquisition is the uh, purchase price full value of consideration is the redemption amount and this is the brokerage or commissions involved that's it you can if you have multiple entries all of them purchased after 31st january 2018 we can just add them all together and enter a consolidated value here it will be very simple but again here if you are doing it for the first time do it individually uh, enter individual records it's uh, that's what i would recommend it's easier to do it it's easy for you to keep track so this is very simple but if it is if the purchase of the units were made 
on or before 31st January 2018, then you have to have, um, this is where you have to enter individually. In individual stocks or individual shares have to be entered. Uh, this can be uploaded in that CSV file, but again, it will be first time users. I will recommend using this. Now you will have to enter the ISIN code of the share or the mutual fund. So I have some ISIN codes here. I had, uh, I had made, uh, I had told you that I had uh, redeemed uh, from equity twice last year to rebalance my portfolio twice. So I have multiple redemptions. So let me just choose one of them. So if I, if I click on the ISIN code, it will tell you HDFC mutual fund uh, top 100 uh, uh, equity. I think this is one of my older funds. This is uh, old data here, or I don't know why this data is there. Let me just choose. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. Sorry. What did I do? I just. Oops. What? Let me just go back there. Yeah. This is one of my old switches. So here you have to enter the total number of shares. Um, or units that you purchase. This is very important because this data you will not readily get in the capital gain sheet. You will have to look at all the transactions details in the capital gain sheet and add them up and add the total number of shares or unit. You will have to enter the sale price that is the redemption price, redemption now. You will have to enter the NAV or the price as on 31st January 2018. All this data will be available in the capital gain sheet and uh, you will have to enter the um, purchase price. So this purchase price, you'll have to look at all the units. See, for example, if you have an SIP running, uh, remember that mutual fund redemption, share redemptions are first in first out basis. So if you have an SIP running and if you redeem the amounts, uh, some units from the first installment of SIP will be taken. Some units from the second installment of SIP will be taken. Some in from the third installment and so on. Each of them will be having a different, uh, purchase price. So you will have to, find the units corresponding to uh, the first SIP, multiply it with the purchase price of the first SIP. Similarly, do it for the second SIP, third SIP and so on, add them all together. I will give you a detailed example maybe uh, tomorrow. I, uh, I'll have a capital gains account uh, post on that. You'll have to find the cost of acquisition uh, based on that. You'll have to add them all up and find the cost of acquisition. Uh, this is something that you may have to do carefully on your own because the capital gain sheet may not uh, provide it properly. Uh, this is again expenditure of in connection with the trans full transfer, then the full value of concentration, which is the redemption amount. That's about it. If you put that in uh, here, consolidation is not possible. You have to do it for individual uh, entries. So if you do that, then you will be able to, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the system will add them all up and give you the data. So that's about it. That's how you file the um, STCG and L uh, LTCG. So if you go back here, just give me that again. I have not entered it for uh, L uh, long term capital gains. That's why this is showing zero. But here you have the data and you, you can go ahead and uh, uh, Go to the next schedule. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I forgot. This is something I keep forgetting. Now this is most important. You will have to enter the in section F. You will have to enter the STCG, uh, LTCG, whatever data, the, the gains that you got up to June 15th. That is from April 1st to June 15th. That is the first quarter. That is in terms of advanced tax uh, deadlines. 16th June to 15th September. 15th September to, uh, sorry, 16th September to 15th December, 16th December to March 15th, March 16th to March 31st. That's those are the five divisions of a financial year. You will have to enter individually how much the capital gains, long term or cap, uh, short term capital gains uh, obtained between each within each period. And this has to the total has to match with your uh, total numbers that you have shown that you have shown here. That's important. Otherwise, there'll be errors. So this is something I keep forgetting all the time. This you have to uh, add. This may not be readily available in the capital gain sheet. You will have to uh, check it carefully depending on the date of run, uh, date of redemption. You'll have to look at it and um, enter the data. If you enter this data incorrectly uh, or there is a mismatch between what you calculated and what you enter here, you may have to pay additional tax because 
the amount of tax you pay depends on when you got the capital gains because there are advanced tax deadlines uh, depends depending on that the taxation will amount will uh, uh, change so you have to be a little careful with that so yeah it is a little cumbersome it is daunting many people will be scared and say i will i will file here i will file there and so on but i prefer doing it here i don't want any intermediaries and if you are like me then hopefully um, this may be of some help to you bye bye